Hi everyone and welcome to learn A-level biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to go through the receptor, the Pacinium corpuscule. If you are new here then just click subscribe to keep up to date on all of the latest videos. So this falls into the nervous system part of the specification and that is because receptors are the cells which detect stimuli and a stimulus is a detectable change in the environment. And these receptors which detect those changes can then trigger a response and it typically would follow this flow diagram so the reason this is so important is the ability for an organism to be able to respond to changes in their environment increases their survival rate and if we look over here this, the nervous system has two key sections we have the central nervous system which is the brain and the spinal cord. And that would be the coordinator part of the flow diagram. But there's also the peripheral nervous system. And this is the part which is made up of the receptor cells, the sensory neurons and the motor neurons as well. So receptors, just a little bit more about receptors in general. We've already said that they can detect changes in the environment, but each receptor can only detect to cause a response to a specific stimuli. And in the AQA specification, there's three key receptors that you need to know about. The one we're going through today, the Pacinian corpuscle, but then also these two photoreceptors in the retina, the rods and cones. And that video is coming out later this week. So when they detect the stimulus, if the stimulus is large enough, it can result in the establishment of a generator potential, or in other words, an action potential, and therefore it initiates a response. So this graph down here is just showing you a bit about these um, action potentials, and it links to the video I did on action potentials, which if you haven't seen, I'll link up here so you can see that first. But for a response to happen, the stimulus has to be big enough that it causes an influx of sodium ions into the neuron larger than minus 55 millivolts. So you need to have enough sodium ions moving in that the inside of the neuron becomes at least minus 55 millivolts and then you get the rest of this response. And we can see here some examples where the stimulus occurred but it was a failed initiation the stimulus wasn't big enough, so you didn't have enough sodium ions move in. Therefore, a re the action potential wasn't generated and a response didn't occur. So if we have a look at the Pacinian corpuscle, how this actually results in sodium ions moving into the neuron to generate an action potential. First thing though, Pacinian corpuscle, the stimulus it responds to is pressure. And you mainly find these in the skin, really deep down. We can see that here. These two Pacinian corpuscles are very, very deep down in the layers of the skin. And most of them are found in your fingers and your feet. And what it's actually made up of is a sensory neuron, which we can see here in blue, wrapped in layers and layers of connective tissue. And there's a viscous gel in between each of those layers. So that is what the receptor is. This Pacinian corpuscule is actually a sensory neuron, but it's wrapped up in layers of tissue with gel in between. And the sensory neuron in the Pacinian corpuscule has special channel proteins in its plasma membrane. And if you can't quite remember the structure of plasma membranes, I've linked it here just so you can have a recap on what the components would be in this plasma membrane on the outside of the neuron ending and this whole sensory neuron and what the channel proteins look like. So these special channel proteins are stretch mediated sodium ion channels. And what that means is these sodium ion channels are closed unless they are deformed and stretched. So they have to be pushed on or in other words, pressure has to be applied 
to pull and stretch open the sodium ion channels to therefore allow sodium ions to diffuse in. So if we go back to looking at this action potential graph, if there is no stimulus, meaning there's no pressure being applied to the fingertips, to those Pacinian corpuscles, then the sodium ion channels aren't being stretched and they're closed. So you don't have any sodium ions entering those channels and the resting potential is maintained. Now, if you did push your finger down on the edge of a table, for example, that might be enough pressure to stretch open enough of these sodium ion channels, these stretch mediated sodium ion channels, for enough sodium ions to diffuse in, and therefore the inside of this sensory neuron becomes closer to the positive or more positive. And if it goes from minus 70, to minus 55 millivolts, it's reached a threshold and an action potential will occur. So here we have the demonstration of what I was just describing. So in the resting state, which means when there is no pressure stimulus, you would have no deformed layers and the plasma membrane of the sensory neuron is also not deformed. So therefore, the channels are too narrow in these stretch mediated protein channels on the membrane for any sodium ions to diffuse in. So you'd be staying at this resting potential. However, in this diagram, I've not shown all the layers around the outside, but these layers would also be pushed down and deformed. What I've just focused on is the sensory neuron here. And we can see if there's pressure applied, it pushes down on that sensory neuron and actually stretches and deforms the plasma membrane. So within this section here where it's being stretched, those stretch mediated sodium ion channels would be open and therefore sodium ions can diffuse in and we get more positive ions inside compared to outside the neuron. And if you have enough positive ions, so sodium ions diffusing in, then it can exceed the threshold and a response will occur because you've generated an action potential. So that is it for the Pacinian corpuscule and how it enables you to respond to pressure.